Yeah, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Just a little quick announcement. I might have to go live tomorrow at noon. Reason being is because I've been called into work on my day off. It's kind of like a mandatory thing. I'm going to try to dispute it because I'm getting ready to take a few days off. See what happens, but I will be putting a community post up later on this evening to let you know what the status is with that, but more than likely, I'm going to be going live at noon. But then again, if they do give me the day off, I might just go live at noon and go live at 9.30 at night. Who knows? We'll see how it is. But let's go ahead and get into this topic right here, shall we? The federal prison system, Unicor. If any of you know what that is, Unicor is the industry's that pretty much powers the entire federal system. All the furniture, even gear for the Humvees, parts of Donald Trump's wall, all that stuff is made in these federal prisons in a Unicor factory somewhere, right? It's kind of similar to PIA in the California uh, prison system, or what is it, uh, PIC, which is in Colorado. I think several other states have industries such as that. Of course, not in Texas, You basically just work for nothing over there. They don't pay you for shit. But a lot of these states have it, which I don't understand why Texas don't. It would probably help help them out with a lot of problems, but that's, like I said, entirely up to the prison population in that state to try to figure it out. But in the feds, in the state, California, Colorado, other places like that, I think a few other states have industries as well, you get paid pretty handsomely. But the problem with a lot of these industries is is all of the political, it's for your own good types, mostly from the progressive left, will basically try to shut these places down and say they're slave labor. And it's always coming for them that it's slave labor. Well, let me explain to you a little something about this slave labor of Unicor in the federal system. So in FCI Florence and USP Florence... They had like a, a Unicor a machine factory, a Unicor laundry. They had a Unicor upholstery factory. El Reno, they made a lot of the parts for the Humvees. Equipped the Humvees to go into the Middle East. Made parts for the wall. <clears throat> other Unicors and other places have other similar functions. They make furniture and whatnot. But we handled all the chairs. So anytime you're resting your ass on a chair in a federal building, whether it be the Social Security office, whether it be a federal courthouse, even all those fist-fucking politicians and weirdos and seat sniffers that are up there in Washington in Congress, even that chair that the <clears throat> QAnon shaman sat in, we made all those chairs, all of that shit, even the president's chair, everything. So what did they pay these guys to make this stuff? Well, you get about, what is it, a dollar, it's like a dollar 84 and and 210, $2.10 an hour. You start out at about 85 cents or or 75 cents, 90 cents, and it works its way up. The highest you can go to is to a P grade. It's like $2.14 or something to that effect. Don't quote me on that. It's been a few years, right? But that's what it is, and I managed to get all the way up to a, a one, a grade one, and I was making about a dollar, like eighty-four, a dollar ninety. So at the end of the month, you're really making about, I don't know, about two hundred and something dollars, sometimes three hundred dollars if you volunteer for a bunch of overtime. If you go in on a sixth, on a sixth day, you go in there on a Saturday and work half the day. By the end of the month, you got well over two hundred dollars, man, close to three hundred bucks. Some of them guys in there. We're making like $500, $600 every month. So it doesn't really sound much like slave labor to me because I'm not really, you know, up on the whole term of how they use slavery. But from what I remember, slaves don't get paid. I would be willing to say that somebody should start pointing some shade in the direction of the TDC and ask them about their slave labor. They're chain gangs and host squads and all that shit. That's slave labor. But when you're in some place like Unicor and you're making $200, $300, $400, $500 a month, 
To me, that sounds like a blessing, and it it absolutely was. For many of us that were in that factory, I got to pay off all the money that I that I got in the bank robbery, the fines that became restitution. I had to pay the bank back, of course. That Unicor factory paid all my fines. That same Unicor factory put a guy that was in there for like well over 10, 15 years, right? He was in there a long time. He put two of his kids through college with Unicor money. Not to mention all the employable skills that you're learning. I learned SAP in there. Six, uh, Lean Six Sigma, ISO. I got to run the computer and sit in a cubicle. I was a quality uh, assurance inspector in there. I used to audit all the books and all the manuals and all the patterns and everything, made sure they were all right. A couple hundred dollars a month I made for doing that. But you got to look at it like this. People are like, whoa, $200, that ain't shit. $300, $400, that ain't shit. A month? Wow, that's nothing. That is slave labor. Okay, well, let me break it down for you. When you're living in a prison, you don't pay for anything. When you're in prison, you pay for nothing. I pay for it when I'm out here. I pay for your electricity. I pay for your food, your water, your cable TV, your laundry service, your boots, your clothing. I pay for that when I'm out here, and so do the rest of you when you're out here. But when you're inside, all of that is provided to you. You don't pay a water bill. You don't pay rent. You don't pay for your food, anything like that. If you want to just live off the kitchen, you could do that quite easily. I mean, it may not be like a gourmet meal anymore like it used to be, but it's definitely not some slop like you get in the county jail either. Especially not in Florence. I mean, we used to get the big old milks, big old giant piece of chicken. Much as you can eat on cereal, salad bar, all that stuff. And salad bars is where they put all the beans and all the rice. You can just load your plate up with that shit. Blow your whole celly out of the house. All that. They had the oatmeal out there, everything in the morning. So you have to ask yourself, with all of those things paid for, not to mention the amenities that you have, the weight pile that was at Florence, the the, uh, art center, You can go into different art classes. They'll give you all the supplies. They'll pay for it. A leather shop. Chapel services, all kinds of different groups. A college program. You can damn near get an associate's degree in business fundamentals. I got that. With all that stuff paid for, for the regular poor working slob that's out here in society, they're lucky if they got about $200 or $300 at the end of the month after they pay all their bills. But all your bills inside are paid, and you got about two or three hundred dollars from Unicor at the end of the month. You can either spend it all in commissary and just buy a bunch of junk, or you can learn how to balance and budget your money. That's what I did. I learned how to balance and budget my money by working in Unicor. I learned how to save my money. I learned how to spend it conservatively. I learned how to pay my fines. All of that fun stuff. And finally, when they shut the factory down, because, of course, slave labor, some of the progressives that are in Washington, D.C. decided that we don't need all these unicorn factories anymore. We just we would rather have you just sit there on a prison yard with no kind of industries, no kind of employable skills that you're learning, nothing like that. And just like any small town or anything like that where the Main factory goes out of business. Guess what? It affects the community around you. So anybody that couldn't make it into the Unicor, anybody that had a hustle, whether their hustle was ironing clothes, washing clothes, cutting hair, having a unit store, running a ticket, anything like that, when you shut that Unicor factory down, all those hustles basically went under. Now, everybody's on dope. Everybody's fighting and arguing. Too many people got way too much free time that they never had before in the last decade. And they go out of they go out of prison and all the people that came in during the time the factory was shut down, well they missed a golden opportunity to learn an employable skill that they may not have had before. So yes, it's unfortunate that they have a profit-making machine called Unicor in the federal system. 
But you want to know what's more unfortunate? The fact that they don't have anything now at all. A blank. So what happens now? Because while they're pulling the plug on all these private prisons on the federal level, I have you seen nothing in the way of bringing back parole. I've seen nothing to challenge the 85% sentencing. I've seen no kind of job development, job placement. You should see some of those Vogue techs in there. Running on outdated equipment and stuff that just, it's laughable in some cases. So what are you really getting out of shutting down unicorns and industries in these prisons, these sweatshops, slave labor shops? Well, guess what? Ask any of those guys or girls or women in any of those places that are working in them, ask them, what do you think about shutting this down because it's slave labor? They're going to tell you to fucking get off my hustle. Keeps people out of trouble. Let's not forget, most people go to prison for breaking the law. As a compassionate society that believes in rehabilitation, we should look at it like an opportunity to pick up the slack where society failed in this school-to-prison pipeline and try to teach somebody some employable skills, some life skills, some cognitive thinking, some emotional intelligence, all the things they don't teach in our schools. So yes, Unicor is a blessing. I don't believe in taking it down. I think it should be in every single federal prison there is. It should be completely self-sustaining and self-supporting. There should be farms in a lot of these places. You, the taxpayer, shouldn't have to pay for much of any of this stuff. Except for the freaking bodyguards, the security guards that run the place. You already know what it is. You heard it right here. Raise and break raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, non sugar coat, not politically correct, all up in your face, slapping you with that dick of reality. And I'm out.